Today we talked about adding three and four digit numbers. Now today we're talking about a particular strategy where we don't draw models, we don't do mental math, uh, instead we're focusing on the standard algorithm. Now when you add seven and three, we get the number, well, the, the answer is ten. But I reminded my students today that 10 is not a single place value. 10 is actually ones and tens. I reminded them that we've been talking about place value. So the ones place for 10 has a zero. And the 10 that you create should go in the tens place. And when you're using this standard algorithm, that's why you carry the one, because you've regrouped the ones into a 10. So now when you add the tens together, you have a 10 plus three tens plus seven tens. Seven plus three gives you uh, 70 and 30, gives you 100, which we, uh, we can probably uh, already know that that's going to go up there. But 7 and 3 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And we know that 110, 70 plus 30 is 100, plus 10 is 110. The 0 is going to go here. It doesn't really affect the 1's place and at all. This 1 goes in the 10's place, because you have 110 left over after you've regrouped for that hundred, which now goes over here. So then you add the hundreds, 300 and 100, which is 400, and you add another hundred, which is 500. So now, and that's 500. So that is a long way of explaining how to use the standard algorithm, but it's important to know why we're carrying the one. If you don't know why you're carrying the one, if you don't understand the place values and how regrouping occurs, later math becomes more difficult. Now when you're doing four digit numbers, such as oh, seven thousand two hundred forty five plus one thousand eight hundred seventy seven there's really not a whole lot of difference in adding except for the extra place value so you have your ones your tens, your hundreds, and your thousands. So when you add the ones together, five and seven makes, uh, let's use this color, makes 12. So the ones place here, we know that we're going to have two ones left over after we regroup that 10. So now we add the 10's together. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We get 12 again. The 2 goes here. And bring over that 1. 8, 9, 10, 11. Put the 1 here, because if you have 11, you put the 1 digit here, and you carry that other digit up here. And 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9,000. And your answer is 9,122. So if the students begin to understand why the regrouping works, then suddenly memorizing this process isn't about memorizing. It's just a shortcut for adding large numbers quickly. Now there was one other thing 
that the assignment wanted us to do, uh, especially for three-digit numbers, which is to estimate. They wanted to make sure we don't forget how to estimate. And when you do an estimate, you have to first round each number. So 337 will round to the nearest hundred. You find your place, look next door. If it's five or greater, you add one more. It's not, so the number will stay the same. Numbers in front stay the same. Numbers behind, zero's their name. And 173 will round to the hundreds as well, because it's the largest place value. Find your place, look next door, five or greater, add one more. Numbers in front stay the same, numbers behind, zero's their name. So when you add together these rounded numbers, you get 500. That means 500 is an estimate that's close to the real answer. So I, uh, I refer to this as a reasonable answer. I know that 510 is more likely to be correct because an estimate, I can estimate that it's near 500. So that's what they mean when they say to write the estimate. 